I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first thing we'll have is the clerk to read the roll call. Uh, Chair Mays? Here. Commissioner Jorgensen? Here. Commissioner Pirro? Here. Commissioner Schiller? Yep. Commissioner Bias? Here. Commissioner Hapola? Here. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Carlson? Here. Mayor Pilon? Here. City Planner Scott? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next thing we'll do is uh, do we have a, a motion to amend tonight's meeting? Oh, I got the wrong slip of this last week. Uh, do we have a, a approve or amend tonight's meeting agenda of July 27th, 2021? Somebody like to make this motion? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Commissioner Pearl made the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Schiller made the second. Any, any questions? Everybody have any Seeing none, I'll we'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. The next thing we're going to do is have a motion to approve meeting minutes of May 25th, 2021. That was a continuation. It was in, we had it in June. Somebody like to make this motion? I'll make a motion. Commissioner Perro made the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. First of all, I'll say, is, is there any, any discussion? Seeing none, well, I'll call for the vote. All, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The first thing we'll do is open the public hearing. The public hearing has to do with 8766 Norris Lake Road. Sean Thompson has requested approval of an intern use permit to allow storage for a home business. Jump city inflation on this 15. 15.83 acres of property. The first thing we'll do is we'll ask the, the clerk, and not the clerk, but our planner, which she has to present. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the building's name is Jump City Inflatables, and the request involves storage of inflatables and enclosed trailers for this off site rental business. Uh, they have like bounce houses, castles, water slides, those kinds of things. So they, they deliver the um, inflatables to properties off-site and charge a rental fee, and they bring them back, clean them, sanitize them, and then store them for the next user. Uh, the interim use permit is required for the storage of the vehicles, trailers, and equipment. Mr. Thompson's already constructed one new building on the property, and another one is currently going up. He has... He has plans for a third building in future years. Uh, as Mr. Chair said, it's located on Norris Lake Road, just off of Now Then Boulevard. It's a 15-acre piece. It's a farmstead with the existing buildings kind of clustered on the west side. So a very large parcel, plenty of frontage. Um, as you can see, it's surrounded by predominantly farmland. There is one small home to the east, which is a rental home owned by the Madsons, and one home to the west, uh, which is buffered by a stand of trees. But other than that, you're a good quarter mile from any other residences in this area. Um, this was a site plan that was included in your packet. I have a slightly revised site plan. Could you please pass that, Lisa? Uh, after this was put into the packet, I just, the owner made note of some inaccuracies, so I, I corrected those and just want everybody to be aware. So currently he's operating in, in a 58 by 60 storage shed, uh, kind of nestled within the pine trees here. And then under construction is the larger 54 by 99, uh, to, into which he'll move uh, after that's complete. He 
um, had been storing some things outside. He was working on a concrete slab on the south side of this existing building. That has since been completed. And um, so there will be nothing visible from the road. Uh, he plans to put up fencing, uh, kind of in an L shape between these two buildings, and then provide some employee parking behind the trees. So one of the inaccuracies was that this driveway, I had it labeled as a new driveway, but it's actually an existing driveway already in place. And then um, he wanted me to indicate this large area in the rear where, where they set up the inflatables and wash them down and refold or roll them and store them. Um, long term uh, would be moving to this 60 by 120 structure on the east side of the property with a different access point from North Lake Road. That, of course, would be pending uh, Anoka County approval. Um, and then there's a possibility that he would come back at a later date for another IUP regarding some sort of a wedding venue in this 54 by 99 structure. He's not certain that that will happen, so we're not including any of that in the current request. This is strictly just the Jump City inflatables at this time. So what we're looking for is your acceptance, and we need to be very specific regarding um, what is stored on site, what the hours of operation are, uh, the type of screening that is proposed or shown on the plan, and we need to get all those items <clears throat> outlined in our findings of fact. Um, given the number of home businesses I've dealt with over the years, I do believe this is a reasonable proposal, and Mr. Thompson's put a lot of effort into making this a um, making and keeping the site very neat looking and he is all about not being able to see things. He'd like to store as much as possible on the inside of the buildings which is why he's spending all this money on new structures. So with that I will let you take a chair and open it for discussion. Okay, is the applicant Mr. Thompson, do you have anything you'd like to add here to that? Um, no. Okay. Seeing that, I'm going to ask the clerk if uh, she'll verify the legal publications and mailing. Is it, is it, is it, the postings has been completed? Yes. Okay. <coughs> now, the PZ, do you have any questions to ask the planner or the applicant please, at this time? I was over at Mr. Thompson's place. He's did a lot of work already. It, it's, it's, it really looks nice what he's got proposed there. Uh, and with the additional, he's going to, we understand, add some more trees and the fencing and stuff, but uh, uh, it looks very nice. I have a question. <clears throat> Mr. Farrell. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that the ap applicant has reviewed the recommendations and that the Monday through Saturday and Sunday hours are what you need for your business since it's a little different. I'm sorry? The hours of operation? The hours of operation are um, 7 in the morning until, you know, and then the, all the hours are gone by... Yeah, sure. Sure. by all means. Just turn, just turn the mic on. Hours of operation are from 7 in the morning and about 9 o'clock. In between those two hours, we load the guys go out. Um, our busy days are Fridays, Saturdays, Sunday, Mondays. Okay. Um, and that's all off-site. And then probably around in between 4 and 6, I mean, it could be 7, 8 o'clock. So the trailers will come in. If it's a little too late, then they just unload the next morning. Okay. And then um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays is our cleaning days. Okay. So we set everything up 
and we sanitize, wash everything down, sanitize it. We don't take hoses and douse it. Well, everything's in spray bottles, so we're not getting all kinds of chemicals on the ground, anything like that. Um, then we roll up, roll up everything and put it up on the pallet racking. So. Don't go far. Right. So the hours that we have here are Monday through Saturday, 7 to 7. Sunday, 3 to 7. That would be adequate enough, basic, based on what you're saying. 7 p.m. is kind of the latest for everybody. Yeah, for people to come and go. So in between, okay. like, let's say 7 and 9, there'll, there'll be trucks leaving. Yep. Um, and then in between 4 and 7 at night, they'll be sporadically coming in, you mm -hmm. know, a couple, few of them. And then the list of your equipment, is that currently what you have, or is that what you could possibly grow to? That's currently what we have. Okay. And we do, pl we do plan to buy some more stuff. So. Okay. And we're constantly turning our inventory, too, because we like our stuff nice. <laughs> so we kind of, we don't like patches, all that stuff on our stuff. So uh, we send that stuff down the road and order new. So. Okay. Are you going to be using any um, exterior lighting or illumination like that? Not really? No. This just dies down just after the fall hits, correct? I'm sorry? The, the, the jump city, the inflatables, they kind of die down towards oh, yeah. the fall. Yeah. In the wintertime, it's all dead. It's mainly from, I would say, May to October. Okay. So and then the rest it has of a dull time. And then, okay. then it's done. So. Okay. But our hours for Tuesdays and Wednesdays are from like 8 in the morning to about 4 p.m. And then that, you know, for setting up. And obviously we're on the property at that time. I have another question to ask you. I think I read one place you're just going to have four part-time people. And one place it said something about two full-time employees. Well, the full-time is me and my son. Okay. Me and my son are the ones that own Jump City. And then the other ones are... Okay. Part time, so. Okay. Right, Mr. Chair. Yes. And remember, when we're looking at home businesses, I know the attorney had stated uh, many years ago. I mean, there could be there could be a business with 20 employees as long as you only have two full time or four part time on your site at one given time. That's limiting the number of vehicles on the site, and then um, we don't count the owners. Any other questions I'd like to ask? If not, we'll Mr. Chair, yes, Mr. just to follow up on Commissioner Perro's point there, um, since you're, you're before the Planning and Zoning Commission now, if you're looking that in the near future this would be bigger than this, this is a better time to plan for that than have to come back and do this all over again. So yeah, you are thinking so. about adding equipment or adjusting hours. If, if you really think that maybe your events end at 7 and you're only getting back at 9, this would be the time to correct it. So when the city checks up on you, you're not violating the conditions. So this yeah, is see, it's, it's, it's sporadic. Like, you know, that's why I said, you know, maybe in between 4 and 7, you know, but sometimes it's a little later, but it's not all the time. Like last week we had a crew get, get back at 11, you know. Um, at night, so, but that was only once last week. But usually it's, usually it's in that time frame. So yeah. this, so this should be changed from the seven to nine o'clock is what you're saying also. I, I think so too, I was just thinking the same thing. You don't even know that you think you're gonna be done by seven o'clock, you know what, push it till nine if it does happen once every couple weeks or whatever, yeah. like he's saying, this would be the time for you to put it in it. Yeah, that's smart. Or any other equipment that you think you're gonna probably have as you have to add three additional trailers, do you think it's gonna be more than that? Um, well, we don't plan to get any smaller, so I would say, you know, I mean, are we going to get super huge? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to pr pretty much maintain what we got going on right now. Um, but, you know, in the future, you know, if we add some more inflatables or, you know, stuff like that, I don't know. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. So, um, like I say, this would be the time. If you get too big, obviously you ought to grow the spot and come yeah. out of the commercial area. But this would be the time, if you're looking at reasonably the growth you're anticipating in the next few years, it would be more equipment. You know, this would be the time to think about those things and go for the options now. Yeah. Even if you, don't have to, you don't have to have that many on there. If somebody comes back later and says, well, you say seven trailers, but you got you know, 10 or 13 on there. 
Yeah. So well, I do have to, to talk about that. I do have some personal trailers, um, like my snowmobile Harley trailer, stuff like that. Um, my fish house. But actually, I mean, right now we've got I think seven business trailers. And so and I mean, your personal you, trailers, are we going to get? Will they be indoors? As well? I'm sorry. The personal, your personal trailers be indoors? I'm hoping so. <laughs> um, once I can get the Jump City building up, then we'll have these extra deals to put my motor home in and you know stuff like that. Um, my goal is to try to get everything inside. You know. Um, so will we get another couple trailers? I mean. Possibly, but you know, right now we only have the seven. So I mean, if you guys want to, let's say nine trailers total, then you know then that might be a safe. That works for you. Nine, ten. Yeah. What, what works for you? And I say we don't we don't want to limit you, other than what's reasonable for that location. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say I'm not going to grow because I'd be lying, you know. So you're sounding disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to retire. <laughs> Give it to his boy. Mr. Chair? Yes. So the way it's written, Mr. Thompson, is seven enclosed trailers not exceeding 16 feet with the ability to add three additional trailers not exceeding 20 feet. And then we said 30 uh, bounce houses, water slides, castles, as long as they are stored inside. Um, so if you want to say five additional trailers, now's the time, or if you think three no, is three No, three additional trailers is totally fine. Okay. Um, and then you, uh, you always store the inflatables inside pretty much, right? Inflatables are always inside, except for when they're wet. Then we put them, you know, on the cement pad because we don't want all that water inside our building. But when we build a new Jump City building, there's actually going to be a lean-to that's enclosed that we're going to store all the wet ones in so you won't see them from outside. Nice. Okay. That's great. That's all the questions that I have. So you, so you really don't want to add, where it says add three additional trailers, you don't want to up that even though that you might never... You well, three additional trailers I think is adequate, okay. you know. Um, I think that would be fine. I mean, if there's already seven on there, three additional ones would be... I don't plan to even do that, but we can do the three. Yep, and we count the personal... Equipment separately, so yeah. all the yeah. residential, the RV, the boat, whatever, the snowmobile <clears throat> trailer, that's all separate. And the 30, uh, uh, the houses and water slides and all that stuff, how do they even know how many mm -hmm. they got if they're inside anyhow? They could have right. 400 right. of them if they really want and they're inside. Yeah. Right. Um, one question I had then is, any other equipment that you do use? Um, I know it sounds silly, but do you have like a generator on wheels or anything like that that you might be having moving around that doesn't ever leave the site? Well, we do have generators when we set the inflatables up in the fields. Okay. Um, we do have generators as of right now because I'm not done uh, remodeling everything. Yeah. Um, but the goal would be to eventually get maybe a power pole or, you know, the, they're, they're close enough to the building where we can <clears throat> plug in um, and be able to run instead of having to gas up generators all the time. But we do have a generators because of like doing festivals, churches, stuff like that, to set up in yeah. fields and stuff. So yeah. I just, it wasn't listed on here, so I didn't want anyone to be like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we do have. We have a boom eight. truck and in trailers, because I didn't know if you had a pole behind it, the ones that have their own no. wheels. Okay. Yeah, well, we have wheels on our generators, but they're not they're the, the actual guys. pole behind. Yeah. No. Okay. The only okay. thing I do have that I don't think Liz has mentioned is a boom truck. We do have that on here. Oh, okay. So and you don't need any other equipment for this stuff. Just <clears throat> boom truck is fine. The boom truck is yeah. Okay. That's just temporary until I'm done with it. Okay. And I'm gonna sell it. So. All right. Mr. Chair, I have, yes, I have a question. Um, in the IOP, there's no notation about uh, the cleaning area where they're gonna do the cleaning of the. And I thought that probably should be in there. If that's a commercial operation. Um, the site plan is part of the, sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, the site plan is part of the official record, and that gets recorded, too. So as long as it's indicated on there, if you'd like to have some condition regarding that, um, that would be something we could talk about. I don't know what you were thinking. 
I mean, they set them up, they clean them, and then they tear them down. So it's temporary, a temporary cleaning area. He said, what, Tuesdays and Wednesday, Wednesdays? Tuesdays and Wednesdays is when we clean and sanitize everything. And it's all behind the buildings. Well, it will be behind the buildings, so cars coming down Norris Lake Road won't see all the inflatables up. It just uh, protect you from any future enforcement action that, if it's not indicated here, someone might think that it's not allowed. Okay. So we can just add that in the final facts. We can add that, sure. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, cleaning of equipment in the south west corner. Set up and cleaning, I'll say. Set up, cleaning, tear down. And also, would the uh, type of cleaning be you need to be specified? He said that he uses an environmentally friendly green something. Untoxic. Yeah, it's the mean green cleaner. You just we put it in spray bottles and just spray it on and just wipe it off. We don't like take power washers and spray it all down with soap and water, whatever, and it all goes on the ground. I mean, everything that we spray, 80, 90 percent of it is getting wiped back up with our our uh, towels, and then we wash all of our towels and reuse them the next week. And then one other thing is the house that Liz mentioned to the west of our property is actually a pole barn. Oh, is that There's, it's not a house. Not a house? Oh, no. okay. I guess I didn't drive that far. <laughs> so another question about uh, exterior storage. It looks like There's alluding to exterior storage for these trailers. Is that spe need to be specified in the IUP specifically since it requires screening and... Well, that's under number three, so that's why we listed the equipment. So he's got that row of pine trees <clears throat> and then he's proposing that screening fence, which is a white vinyl. Let me go back to this site plan here. Because the uh, number two says storage limited to indoor space, with the exception of pads and parking areas. So all the trailers will need to be on those. Well, he's got gravel park. areas too, so I mean, but his intention is to keep it back by these two buildings. Um, and then behind this designated L-shaped fence there. And just... Just so you guys know, too, I purchased uh, 24 huge pine trees <clears throat> that I'm going to be putting in for kind of barriers, too, to kind of block everything. Well, she's got her cursor there. Is that, uh, is that cement, cemented in? Is that what that's that's uh, going to be cement. This, is, this okay. is the building under construction. Yeah. Okay. So this will be a pad. This isn't a pad that was just poured. And this is the fence between the two buildings. So this whole area is blocked from views up here. Yeah, because you can't see anything back there except for when you're on Norris Lake Road. If you look between those two red buildings uh, where the yellow fence is, um, that's the only place you can see through. So that's my only issue is making sure that that's covered. So you can't. So when you're driving by, you, you're not going to be able to see anything going on back there. This is more than 300 feet back from the road, too. So, would you like to clarify that every is to be to be on the concrete pads if it's not inside? Is that okay, or will some be I, on gravel? Do you think? Yeah, no. The tra there's the trailers won't fit on the concrete pads. They'll have to be on the crushed um, asphalt that I haven't put in. Okay, so um, back here though, Mr. Thompson, or? Yeah, they will all be behind the building there, so there and then over to the, the new building. 
Okay, so limited to the area between the two buildings, which is screened from the road behind the fence here. Yeah. Okay. Does that clarify it enough for you, Mr. Heffler? Yes, we can put that in uh, number three then. Yeah, we'll include that maybe in two and or three. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna so we're gonna add in there concrete pad and gravel or similar material, correct? I'll, I'll, sh I'll amend the site plan to show kind of another rectangle that's gravel in between these two pads. And then that's kind of the storage area there. We'll designate that, okay? Does that sound okay? Yeah. Back here? Okay. But you see where the road comes in? Right The here. driveway to the left, the existing driveway? Mm -hmm. This one? No, no the yeah, existing, there, there you go. Yeah. Right where your pen is at, right, right through there. Um, I park stuff there too, just because it's hidden behind the trees. Oh, okay. And so pretty there. much, pretty much from where your pen's at over to the building is kind of where I like to park. Because all the trees just because it's hidden from the road. Okay. So does the commission is that acceptable too to designate that as part of the parking area as long as he's within numbers? You know he could maybe move them around as his needs change, but as long as he's meeting these uh, maximum numbers of vehicles, is that acceptable to the commission? Mm. Yes, as long as it's okay with it, Mr. Thompson. Yes. I, I agree with that. Does this IUP cover the uh, additional building? Yes. So you should address that any concerns you might have with that. Okay, so that that would uh, be need to be included in the exterior storage allowance once it's complete. Well, that would be on a concrete pad. So yeah. if he parks trailers there, right. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mayor. And just clarify on the additional building, all the white is concrete pad, outdoor storage, and the red outline is the building itself. With the storage. yellow as the fencing, right? Yeah, yellow would be a privacy fence, but there again, um, to concrete all that would be a lot. Mm -hmm. So it would be partial and then partial crushed asphalt. Okay, well, we can indicate it as a parking area. It's not required that they be on concrete, so maybe that's the better way to go. If he wants to put in the concrete, he can. Or if you're, if you're requesting a certain area be concrete, but it's not a requirement. So if we indicate the white, just, or, you know, uh, indicate parking areas, that will keep them back away from the road and in the designated locations. In other words, he, he'll put in as much as the amenity he wants to. We're not requiring anything there for a pad. Right, that would be what I would recommend if, if everybody's okay with that, yes. There's not an ordinance requirement requiring that it be concrete unless you specify one as part of this permit. Any other questions from the commission? I'll open up to the public if anybody in the public wants to make any comment at this time about this. If, if not, we'll... <clears throat> See if there's any additional stuff we should discuss here. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mayor. Is on the exhibit the uh, parcel information? Is that accurate? No. I must have had another parcel selected. See, it says Xenon. No, so sorry for that confusion. No, he's the outright owner. So I should correct that as part of the records. Correct. So 
If someone would like to make a motion um, and include the reference to the changes to the site plan that were discussed regarding gravel and concrete and or concrete parking, um, then we can move that forward to the council and they will get to see the amended plan before final decision. Okay, I'm going to ask again if anybody in the public has got any comments to make. They'd like to see it added here. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to uh, we have any more here in finding a zoning and comments. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Now we'll ask them on. Liz, would you read back to us uh, the recommendations of the changing in your uh, findings of facts? Yes. Uh, item one on page one, condition one rather, on page one regarding hours of operation, we're going to change to 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday, Sundays 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. 7 p.m. late enough on Sundays? Well, let's just do 9 across the board. Because our weekends are, are busy times. Uh, we will indicate Tuesdays and Wednesdays as cleaning days using a nat nat nature based sanitizer uh, in the southwest corner of the site where the inflatables are set up, cleaned, and then torn down. Uh, we are. Number two will be updated regarding uh, designated gravel and or concrete parking areas as shown on the site plan to be behind the trees um, on the west side of the site and then in the designated areas shown in white near the buildings on the site plan. Uh, the number of the permitted equipment list was acceptable to Mr. Thompson as outlined in number three. And I believe that is it. Okay, and you changed the hours from nine to nine? Uh, seven to nine. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. On Monday through Saturday, and then three to nine on Sunday. I would like to put in there also for the additional trailers, I'd like to go from the three to five, is I just don't, I, I would rather him have the option and have him to come back in front of us again at some point. Even if he's never going to buy them, you, know, you don't know what's going to happen in a year or two. Okay. Does the rest of the commission agree or do you want to stay at three? Seven and five is 12, so it's. You go from 10 to 12 then. He's adding two more. Mm -hmm. Do we have an agreement on the commission of hop it up to five? Any problem with that? Yep. Commissioner Jurgerson, you have a problem with that? Nope. Just yeah. fine. Have a problem with that? Good with that. Okay. <clears throat> We're all in sort of agreement on that. Okay. So at, at this time, we'll make it open to a motion uh, to uh, go with this uh, CUP, or IUP rather, and also with the recommendations that our uh, planners just read to us. Somebody like to make this motion? A motion out. Commissioner... Uh, boy, Schiller. Schiller. <laughs> Schiller. I'll second Made the motion to somebody make second. second. Yeah, Commissioner Papala. Uh, Made, made the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It passes. You'll be going to the planning or the city council meeting the second Tuesday of next month. They make the final decision. Okay. Thank you for coming. We'll be in, Thank you, be in touch. Okay, the next thing we're going to, second thing in our uh, agenda here 
is the concept development plan for the Kohler property. J. Rose of LGI Homes has requested feedback on the 14 lot subdivision on 80 acres. The property is located east of Boss Street and will provide connection between 194th Lane and Bicum Street. Uh, I'll let the planner share with us what she has. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Rose is in the audience as well. If you have any questions when we get to that point. The subject property is off of Boss Street. Uh, many of you are familiar with the Kohler property, the Kohler, old Kohler farmstead. Um, Jay Rose is taking over some of the um, parcels that Mr. Raisler has owned uh, or intended on developing. So conceptually speaking, we're looking at this 80 acres between 194th Lane and Vicuna Street. We have two main access points at 194th Lane and 190th, so we are um, not looking at another access point onto Baugh, but we are definitely looking at that connection uh, between the neighborhoods. So this was the submitted concept plan. Uh, Mr. Rose did meet with the city engineer and I, as well as the city clerk and city staff. And the only comment we had uh, was regarding the extension of a cul-de-sac to the west uh, into those two parcels that front on Boss Street for eventual development. Um, we agreed that it was a, a good layout the only real hiccup that I that came about was some street naming issues because we're coming up from Vicuna Street on the south and we're connecting to 194th so it's kind of awkward typically the north-south streets um, you know have the rock and mineral names and the east-west streets have the numbered um, whoops, let me go back to my east-west streets typically are the numbered. So because of the way 194th Lane was curved to the south, it's kind of an awkward situation. But, I mean, we can always address that at the naming part of it at a later date. I did suggest uh, the, an alternate street layout in my report which would allow 194th Lane to sort of curve into this cul-de-sac here. And then um, what I was showing by putting these address numbers on the map is that they're not even in numerical order for fire and emergency access reasons. So even though it's a hassle to the property owners, we may want to consider looking at that um, when this plat moves forward. But all in all, you know, they've completed their wetland delineation. It fits well into the neighborhood and um, they meet the density requirements with the overall average of five acres. Uh, they're respecting the wetland locations. And this is the hydrology map from, of the region. So they, they uh, have a nice piece, nice piece of land there. This is the official, um, well it hasn't been reviewed by the LGU, the city's local governing unit regarding wetlands, um, but they've done the actual delineation so what happens is there's a TEP panel, T-E-P, Technical Evaluation Panel that goes out and they all have to agree on the boundaries that were flagged by the delineator and then that becomes the official boundary. So that's, um, that, will, that will happen sooner or later. So any thoughts on this? Oh, there is some should be a little conversation about park 
dedication because the area is located within one of our park search areas and this map comes out of our not only our park and trail plan but our comprehensive plan and so the two adjoining or adjacent subdivisions do not have any trails to connect to um, so you'll have to discuss whether uh, oh, sorry, let me go back to this. So what the pink is indicating on here is just walking, being able to walk on the local streets. Oh, I have this indi indicated in the wrong spot. Sorry to confuse mm -hmm. you all. It's up here. <laughs> I'm sense. so sorry. It's right to the north of this subdivision. But either way, there are no existing trails to which we have require connection. So your thoughts on either accepting cash dedication, which is two thousand dollars per lot per park, so five hundred and five hundred per trails, that goes into the city's uh, general park fund for improvements elsewhere. And and or you know you could, I don't see any real need for a trail connection other than the local streets. Um, Baugh Street is actually slated for upgrades uh, where there will be paved and widened shoulders. So that would actually create a nice loop um, around through the neighborhood and then down Baugh and then back. And then eventually when this land behind is developed, we could connect to the east. For the new members, it's, it's most typical that we ask for cash. Um, in this situation, I guess that would be my recommendation unless there were some other thoughts. Some cities do, you know, like smaller neighborhood parks, but we, we don't have the staff um, to maintain those types of areas right now and now then. I have a question. Is that a big problem? You have three lots up there in other development. They'll have to change their numbers and also the street numbers, I think, for their addresses. Is that a big problem to have that changed? Well, yeah, it's a hassle for the homeowner, but um, yeah, this, the, the designation of these numbers doesn't make sense when they're not in order, so I'm not sure. It's hard to see the lot lines on here, but I think it was these two that were, these three that were kind of goofed up. Is that something legally we'd have to do as a city then? Uh, we don't have to, no. If, but if we don't change it, it's but, kind of... I mean, you have to think about things like fire access and the ease of the emergency personnel and getting to these parcels, um, you know, in an emergency. But is that right of us to ask these people? That to change their addresses when they already have an address? Well, yeah. no, I, I don't think that should be our focus right now. I just brought it up as a, as to make a point, but I mean, they they have designated addresses. It's not, I mean, I have a, I don't know, Mr. Chair. Know. Yes, Commissioner Pearl. Based on the layout of it, I don't know why the numbers are concerned. They're in numerical order based on left to right. They really are. Yeah, it is. it's because of the way the driveways. Yep, because that 80, what is it? What's that last one? 8833? Mm -hmm. That one comes off the cul-de-sac. The next one over is the next one up. 8955, that's the next one over. And then 8975 is right across from 9060. There's numerically set up properly. 
But yes, it is odd to see it that way. But it, it makes sense. Uh, well, if you saw the aerial photo. No, I know that. I, if you, anyway, that's, I get like it. I said, that's not the yeah, it's focus not this here as we're looking. Big, 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 yeah. We're going to connect the street either way. It's just a matter of what we name it. <clears throat> yes, there's, there's a 8957 just north of 8975, and that's the one that's out of order. Yeah, thank you. And it's off okay. the map right here. Oh, it's not on the map. Oh, okay. It's, it's on the large map. In oh, okay. <clears throat> As far as the whole layout of the, the what do you call it, concept plan here, it, I see, I see no issues with it. And if we're questioning what to name the street, I think the extension of Vicuna is probably the smartest way to go because most driveways are going to come right out onto that and then changing the one cul-de-sac to, like you said, 100 a second. The way it was shown in the actual report? In, like, on there. Oh, okay. Well, so in the report, I had this, like, 194th coming down and, and, and terminating here. Yeah, no, I, it makes more sense to be named like that. But see, this is, by, this Vicuna can't meet up with 194th, so 194th Where? would have to end here then, and then Vicuna starts here, which is kind of silly. Why can't it meet up on a corner or a curve it can't where property lines it. change? It can't do that because it's it's right in the middle of a. It, it's either at an intersection or it's at it, you know. Okay, so you're saying that those top four labeled one, two, fourteen, and thirteen would be on a hundred and ninety fourth based on what you're saying. The way it's shown here, yes, 194th Lane would end at this corner, okay. and then this would then Vicuna would start here. Yeah. And the only other way to do it is to curve the street, like I showed on the report. And it's one continuous street instead of ending it. Um, That's easier to follow, but it's a little easier. Anoka County is such a mess on some of those streets, how they change the directions. So I'm not going to put any. Anyway, but uh, either way, way we, yeah. can, we can accomplish getting a call. How would that affect that corner line with those three lots there if you did um, your alternate layout? They're going to have to do something different. Well, he may gain one C on the up here because there's four shown up in this quadrant then. And then you might lose one of these two or three, one of these three. Is it necessary that 192nd goes to Ba, as you've shown, or even on this drawing here? Is no, it necessary 192nd that will not go to Ba. Okay. But it will go to the East. land. Yes. Yeah, go to the west. So the arrow you have shown doesn't, it doesn't have to be there because it kind of seems silly to do that because the property to the west of this has direct access to Baugh. Right, so but we always want to eliminate that if we can. Because Baugh right there is an arterial street which is, you know, carries a lot of traffic. So that's why we, when we subdivide these two parcels, um, so you've got another four parcels potentially on each 20, it is smart to have the road going towards the west, absolutely. Yeah, so then this would call the sac here. You know, if, if the farmhouse still remaining at that time, those two homes, one or two homes can front on Baw, but then the, the six new ones back here would be on a call de sac. Right. Okay. <clears throat> what about at the other end of the property? Here? Yeah, what about if they develop that? Well, this is not, this is all a big wetland here. So that's why we have to go with this cul de sac like this. See this big wetland, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yeah. And just so some of you may or may not know, this used to be that DNR property 
and it was oh, right. um, purchased by a, an adjacent landowner, and it, it's really not developable. There may be one building site, possibly, but we don't even know if it'll support a septic system. Yeah, that's pretty low land in there. Yeah, so that's it, and it backs up to this wetland here. So. How about the property to the north? Right here? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that briefly, but um, the city engineer's uh, bigger concern was getting a cul-de-sac back this way. Is that property north landlocked? No, uh -uh. it's not landlocked. Um, but that's similar to, uh, to this old DNR property in that it's all tiled and kind of questionable as far as development. For the new members, when we're dealing with concept plans, uh, the decision or recommendation, it's really not a, it's not a formal decision. Um, it's just advisory, um, kind of a courtesy to the landowner if they choose to ask, you know, your opinion. It does not go to council, so uh, there's no timeline involved. Um, Mr. Rose can come back in one month or, you know, 10 years with a preliminary plat. It's just up to him. There's no timeline or anything. Does Mr. Rose want to add something? Go ahead and come up to the mic. Hi there, Jay Rose with LGI Homes. Um, so yeah, this is concept plan. We haven't done the full digging into it the engineering you know that's really needed to make sure we we meet all the requirements in terms of septic locations and and um for the lots the the, the area of, of high ground for each lot um but we have done wetland delineation on it um and one thing like you know the the discussion with the street names um you know, I, I really hope I don't want to see street names dictate the, the street layout and subdivision design because we kind of got to work with the topo there. Um, so, yeah, we need to get a little more information to see how these lots can best fit. Um, and, and that'll kind of dictate the, the, the street layout on this a lot, to, a, to a large degree. We'll figure it out. But I agree, it shouldn't necessarily dictate the layout. We don't want you to lose a lot over a street name. <laughs> right, and I mean, yeah, it, it is best to have the street name change at, at an intersection. You know, there are situations where some cities have street names change at a curve or something. Um, you know, we've got that in a project in, in Elk River, a looping street. So that curve is kind of an intersection. It's a looping street. The, the street changes direction. So, um, but you know the site kind of lays itself out. We got two connection points on the north and south. Wetlands on the east, and that topo slopes down. So in terms of trying to get a road to the northeast, you're, you're going into a questionable area of. of of wetland, but also you're going down topo and you get into a lot of grading and, and you know it's it really lays itself out nice for for the lots for walkout lots there um, and cutting a road down in there would um, kind of ch change the the natural topography there. So the site really does kind of lay itself out um, with not too many options in terms of layout. Do we have any questions to ask the applicant? I guess. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah. Do you have a problem with adding that 192nd circle or court that was proposed by? Well, I, I just wanted to clarify. Are you saying that when if that property were to, were to be developed, they would not be allowed 
uh, an access to bow. So, I mean, right now the property's not landlocked, um, but you know, if if we're providing a street access, that's with that length, that's you know, sixty thousand dollars that we don't necessarily even lots that front on it that get the benefit. So, um, you know, I understand the need for for providing access to properties. But yeah. Well, you, so, all, you also benefited from Vicuna and 194 coming previously right. from the neighboring property. So it would be a similar benefit to the one to the west. So in terms of the question of, of yeah. you know, our, to, to us it's... it's it's not a benefit, really, but I understand the, the need for for that. So, would that road have to be built when this neighborhood's put in, or would it, or would it, you just put an easement in and then that road would go through after they developed that other piece of property? No, he'd be required to put a temporary cul-de-sac to the limits just of the, the property, just like all the other ones around it. They all have temporary cul-de-sacs. So to clarify, it would dead end. Mm -hmm. Then right at the right. end of it. Property okay. line, yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we get to that point, I mean, that was the engineer's recommendation at this time. When we come to a preliminary plat, you know, we would all review this again, make a recommendation. Seniors. You can, well, you know, you don't always have to go with your staff recommendation. Or yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but it is, I tends to, you know, be what happens. Well. <clears throat> To me, it makes a lot of sense to extend the Kuna Street all the way up to 194th Line. And unfortunately, three people would have to change their addresses, but I know my parents changed their address four times at their last house, so. Oh, well, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> when you live in a developable area, it, it happens. Then you could always come off of that corner where 8955 and 8975 meet to the property in the west. You could come off of that at a T and feed that neighborhood if you wanted to instead of the cul-de-sac for 192nd. But mm -hmm. I don't know, that, that seems to be logical to me to extend the coon all the way up. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> Can get through there if there's a, there's a pond there, and then, right? So, yeah. It's all in. Yeah. <clears throat> we we are. Uh, you're saying we we would we would not require trails in that development then. Well, there's really no reason to, Mr. Chair, because there's nothing to connect to. We did not require trails in the to the north or the south. If we had a trail sitting out there that was a dead end and we had a connection, it would make sense, but we don't. So just using our local streets as walking areas, knowing that Boss Street will eventually have a paved shoulder, I mean, that's a nice walking loop there. And we'd be, we'd be just asking for money. In yes. Basically. You could just ask for the park and trail dedication fees per lot. Okay. Anybody else have any comments here? We do not make any recommendations here, right? Correct. Okay. Is there anything else we should discuss? Sounds good. It was a good discussion. Okay. We'll go. We'll go to our next one in our third. Thank you for coming, Mr. Rose. We'll go to our third thing on the uh, list. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Mr. Rademacher had to leave town unexpectedly, so we are going to call him and try to make him part of our meeting um, so that he can listen in. Okay? Let's see here. And this, I'm sorry, I forget your name. Uh, he, he's here with the Rick Nelson, who is a home builder, and he was working with uh, Grant Rothbach. So he's here to listen in as well. Wait, we'll wait for you to get him on.
done before we. Number three on the uh, agenda here is the Conception uh, Development Plan for 181st Avenue and Boss Street property. Pat Marmaker of the Romanac Company has requested a feedback on this proposed subdivision with 20 single family lots and one commercial parcel 110 acres. Uh, <coughs> I'm turn it over to Pino Stockman. She can present what she has. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, this is a 110-acre property owned by Kent Wiesler. It's in the very southwest corner of our city on 181st Avenue at the city limits. Um, there's a 40-acre parcel here owned by... The Stovers, it's a sod farm. And then there's a 10 acre piece here that was just sold to, I guess as a residence really, this, this was Stover's landscaping and they, they moved over to this 40 acre parcel which was owned by his father. Anyway, um, the proposal is for this 10 acres on the corner of Baugh and 181st uh, to be a Bill's convenience store with a G. Will Liquors, and the remaining land, 100 acres, would become 20 single family lots, uh, meeting our five acre overall density. There's this triangular area here that's quite wet, and there's a large power line that runs through the site. Uh, so, we they have the concept is respecting those. Um, two critical elements. Um, it's also connecting these two existing streets in Burnside Trails. Uh, I did recommend some <clears throat> changes to, whoops, let me go back here. First, I need to address the zoning. This is a currently zoned RRA, uh, Rural Residential Agriculture. It's guided low density residential. So any commercial use on this corner would require a comprehensive plan amendment, meaning that we would change the, it from being guided low density residential to commercial slash industrial on our land use plan. And then the city would rezone the 10 acres if it deemed that appropriate to allow that uh, convenience store and liquor store. The remaining part of the property, the 100 acres, is appropriately zoned currently to accommodate the residential use. Um, a few years back, uh, we had a similar proposal that did not involve all of the single family land. Uh, I would say that this proposal is far superior to the one we had previously because it's offering up a unified design. Um, they're offering up some amenities like trails and um, a buffer zone along Boss Street to try to control the light and other potentially negative impacts to the existing subdivision uh, Burnside Trails across Baugh. To the north we have Bailey Estates so this actual extension that they show to the north for a street is not necessary. Rather, we need to somehow get a cul-de-sac back into this upper corner to access these three lots. 
uh, the way it's shown on here, they have kind of a private drive, a shared private drive, which we really don't allow. We could allow, our ordinance does allow for one or two flag lots by conditional use permit, and if it's necessary, and this would be a, not a terrible situation for that because it is a dead end situation, which is hard to access with a street. But like I said, I did show a couple different ways to lay this out with a cul-de-sac. Um, so this, both the city of Elk River and the city of Ramsey are still showing uh, rural residential adjacent to our borders, and which would, um, I guess, coincide with our rural re residential as it's currently indicated. There is a nursery that's located right here in the city of Ramsey, and that's kind of long been discussed as a possible commercial site in Ramsey, although I... As I noted, they have not changed their comprehensive plan to reflect any talk about that. Um, so here's the changes in, with the cul-de-sac showing a couple different options in accessing this upper corner. I think all the logistics of streets can be worked out in uh, the future. I would say the biggest hurdle that you have is this comprehensive plan amendment and rezoning. I know that Mr. Rademacher is 100% um, in agreement with you know, funding this process to go through it. Um, you will be getting some um, probably feedback, shall we call it, from this Burnside Trails neighborhood. Uh, when we have these public hearings for the comp plan amendment and rezoning. So um, one thing to note is that sometimes when we are rezoning a single parcel for the benefit of that owner, it's sometimes referred to as spot zoning. And it can be frowned upon, uh, but one of the things to uh, consider then would be whether you want to include the adjacent parcel also as a commercial use, and that would be one possibility. Uh, another possibility would be not allowing the rezoning at all or comp plan amendment. Um, but the other thing is to look at the, the uh, policies in our comprehensive plan, which I included at the end of the packet, and that's a big factor in determining what we want to allow and don't want to allow in our city. Um, one thing that came, that popped out at me under the commercial land use policies um, at the very end, it said promote local employment opportunities. Uh, no, that's not the one. Let's see. Uh, provide services which represent the varying needs of the community and which serve not only local residents but the broader regional market. So I think there are um, policies both for and against this type of a use. Um, it is very common to see a convenience store within a neighborhood setting. Um, you can actually establish a separate neighborhood um, zoning district if you chose to do so. And that would limit the uses on the corner to um, things that were more friendly with the neighborhoods. In other words, you know, maybe a karate studio and a um, service type businesses and convenience. Um, not as much as, you know, like major retail that's open, um, attracting large numbers of people, etc. 
So it, it is a tough decision to know what to do in this kind of a situation. Um, but I do think it's beneficial that we've that it does include 110 acres this time as opposed to just a standalone commercial rezoning. And if you choose to use that to your advantage and gain some amenities in the city, uh, you could move forward uh, along those lines. Now, the other things I highlighted in the report, this is a soil, hydric soil map. They have not done a wetland delineation for this parcel. So this just gives you an idea again of this big triangular area that's wet. The green is the high ground and the orange is, um, is sort of in between. The delineation would be required if they chose to move forward. Uh, also discussed in the report briefly was the traffic counts on 181st. Um, we're up at 8,700 to 9,800 cars per day, average daily traffic, right out in front here of where and toward Elk River. And then the traffic dissipates and goes north and south or continues on 181st, so then it drops down to 3,000 or so cars a day uh, and as it progresses to the east. But it is a busy corner. And then this is a, there's a plan for four lanes in Elk River coming up to our border uh, by 2024 or thereabouts. They have part of Part of County Road 12 is already four lanes. You've probably driven through there and seen the improvements this year. There's a nice trail that runs along the north side, but it ends at, uh, what is that street? Cleveland, I think. Uh, I've already mentioned the improvements along Baugh that are pending in the next year or two. Uh, which is an overlay and then widening shoulders and paving the shoulders. So there's a lot going on. Um, we can just have an open discussion about the various points of view and, and or questions that you might have about the project. And we can go from there. Do you know what uh, Anoka's plans are for over there, if they're going to do any work on that road? Where? Anoka County, you mean? Yeah, Anoka County, <coughs> coming out from Elk River there. Elk River's going um, already the through theirs. 2030 sure. plan, their plan is to turn it over to the state. They want to turn 22 over to the state, all the way across the county. But, and I would assume that would go to a four-lane road then, if, if they did that. But... That was the original plan, and I don't know how that affected Baugh, you know, right. meeting 181st there right. mm -hmm. in that north-south part. And I would assume at that intersection, if they did any improvements, that would become two turn lanes. And, you know, I don't know if it'd be two turn lanes and two straight, or if they would go up 22, but it, it, that corner is going to be developed at some point to something more significant. Right now, there's a residence there, really close to the corner. Pardon? There's a residence close to that corner currently. Yeah, just the one, yeah. Mm -hmm. They may end up buying it, yeah, someday. And, um, yeah, there's lots of truck traffic that goes north and tries to skirt the scales on 10. <laughs> <laughs> Rodermack did approach Gordy over there after we turned it down here. And uh, Gordy was is not ready to sell at this time. I don't know if he's ready to sell now or not. But uh, there's going to be something going in. I, I agree. Either either place it doesn't. It, and the way I look at it, why shouldn't we have it and get the taxes from it? Mm -hmm. I'm 100% with you on that. But I think this 
area, this corner makes sense for something to like that. And this is much better than 2017. I, I like this better than having the additional commercial. And, what, and with like the plan that's being presented, they're presented for the whole, all the acreages. And when it was presented before, it was just presented for a little bit there. I forget how many acres it was presented. Well, they, uh, it was like upwards of 40 acres of commercial all along 181st. Right. Um, and it did not include hey. residential. Um, should I put him on speaker? Sure. Are you there? Okay. All right. Can you hear us okay? <coughs> Okay. Hi, Grant. It's Liz. Um, I've already made my presentation. It was fairly brief, but we are now talking about um, traffic on this corner. Um, we have several commissioners that are in agreement that this corner is um, destined for something bigger. So that's kind of where we left off. Um, if at any time you can't hear what's said, Please just speak up and I'll try to repeat the question or the comment, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So I have a, how often have we redesignated, like done the spot um, rezoning? Rezoning? Not too often. Never. Not too often. No, we've done okay. it like one other time, two other times maybe. Yeah. The question okay. was how often do we do a comp plan change or a rezoning? Um, it is not real frequent. Mr. Carlson, um, we, we do want to always make sure that our land use plan matches our zoning map. Um, we just went through a comprehensive plan amendment. Uh, we did briefly talk about this corner, and the council at that time decided not to add any commercial there, um, So, which is why it would require going through Met Council for that change. But typically, yeah, it does not happen a lot. Uh, it can be requested by either a property owner or the city council can <coughs> rezone an area if they chose to do so. Okay. Do you know why, I mean, and I don't know if the mayor can address why it was not considered for zoning commercial at that corner at the it's time? It's solo right now. Right now there is no other commercial around it. It's just a home businesses around sure. it. So it wasn't a high priority at the time. Mr. Mayor, do you want to share any thoughts on that about what you recall from the previous request or would you rather not? Well, I think the, the records are clear. I mean, last time I saw 100 people in this room, <laughs> was that night? Yep. Um, but I, I think a big part of what killed that plan was the uh, additional development around it. Yes. The uncertainty, the um, what appeared to be rushed to major industrial commercial concept without including any of the neighborhood input. Or, so there was a lot of negative press it certainly got people excited without facts and when they came in and what they did see wasn't as thorough as this mr chair yes yeah i would agree with that i mean if we have a limited area it's a smaller commercial area than it was previously if we have a mm -hmm. defined user versus just having it open-ended um, you know, we know Mr. Rademacher keeps his sites neat, um, and I'm certain that he would cooperate with us, you know, regarding anything architectural, and um, like I said, he's willing to go through that process. I, you know, it really doesn't get any better than what's proposed, I mean, generally speaking, as far as the residents from Burnside Trails looking across Baugh at another neighborhood, right? So it's really that, just that corner that would be of concern. Um, but I think if we plan it right as far as buffers and limited lighting and those kinds of things, 
we we have good ordinances in place um, and I don't know if any of you have heard of this dark sky <coughs> association but we have a very good lighting ordinance that requires all down lighting and um, you know certain uh, there's certain colors colors of lights that are not as glaring to our eyes and those kinds of things um, so but we can work on those things later I uh, like I said, right now I think the discussion should focus on the, the commercial user and the change. But, um, yeah, any other thoughts on the traffic or? Well, I, I know the traffic over there is just, it's tremendous. There's just, uh, it's unbelievable. It, and, and all I got to say is if we don't have it there, it'll be there. Yeah. It, it's going to be there. There's no question about it. it and there's no question about it. it. Even if Ramsey puts it in, there's going to be a lot of people upset. Yeah. It, it, either way, it, there's, there's going to be a lot of problems. Well, with I, I believe by 2030 that will be a four-lane road. Yep. And it'll be a major thoroughfare through the county. So. Because look at what Sherman <clears throat> County's already done out to our line. Right. I haven't been over the road since they've done it, but it's been closed all summer. Yeah. You, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but have you been out since they... Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's tremendous, huh? Yeah. You know, we take it almost daily, so, yeah. So, I guess I'd be in favor of uh, you know, pr um, pursuing this, and I would be in favor of changing it over to commercial and stuff like that, over to, like, up bills with the liquor store and stuff like that. I think it would be a great idea. Okay, so we have, what, three that are in favor? How many? I'd be in favor with the shared uses and, and looking for uh, rezoning. Mm -hmm. What about Four. you, okay. Mr. Carl? Uh, uh, potentially, if it was like a you know, specific use, I think that might be uh, a little bit more acceptable. Yeah. You're, you're okay with knowing what the user might be or the end result? Okay. And what about you over here, uh, Mr. Papala? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about the specific businesses he has here listed as being the best ones for the area, but maybe uh, something that would fit in a residential neighborhood better. Maybe a gas station's okay. But, the know, gas station part? Yeah. And, uh, you are okay with the gas station? Possibly. Or you're not? Possibly. It, oh, he's got, he's sounds like a, he's 50-50 on the gas yeah. station part of it, but he's okay with, would you say, a, something that fits in with something the neighborhood? Something better, maybe like a, something that provides a service to neighbors, like a, uh, maybe like a daycare, right. daycare or something. Or a, It'd be the wrong corner for a daycare, but. But, yeah. Well, <laughs> well or, but it'd be more acceptable with the neighbors, probably. Yeah, it's I mean, it, it is, yeah. it's, it's very much an industrial corner, especially with the greenhouse on the one side, and it's kind of an empty corner on the other, but... Um, Across the street, there's... But up the street, well, and that's why I like the current plan, where you have the residential yeah. behind that. Um, if that house goes away across the road, then it'd probably be a, more acceptable to everyone. Yeah. But, so, it would not be a pleasant place to live. Right now, it's probably not that great, but... It's a pretty busy corner, and, and yeah, so I just unfortunately like I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Huppala. Just on the, it, it is a busy intersection. It's just that we have it zoned as residential, and what exactly that the implications, I guess. But if it, it <coughs> go to open open comment again, right? So we can address all of the details, Mr. Chair. Uh, two questions I wrote down was um, reviewing of you know, the land policies and how it would fit with any kind of commercial business that would go there. Um, what, what would be more highly sought after? And then the other question I had for myself was checking on the uh, zoning right to the west of it from in Oak River zoning, what they have planned, uh, what they have zoned for that area, just to know what we're up against in the future. That was the two things that I wrote down for myself. Mr. Jurgensen, we haven't heard from you yet. Oh, there's, there's too many things right now that we don't know. Mm 
And one is the state has been surveying west of St. John's across what is, I believe, is it, um, whatever that road is where they put the new uh, uh, roundabout. roundabout right Jarvis. There. They were way west going across through there. And that was the state surveying. So I'm wondering what's, you know, I think we're missing some details of it's going to affect that whole area. There's no major road on the other side of that other than 169. Well, you see, that that's the thing is, is where does that 22 going to end up at? And mm -hmm. we haven't been told what's going to happen there. And that's a big piece of that whole puzzle. The west of 22, though, it, from that roundabout, that's a lot of wet land. For them oh, to put a road through there, it, there's no way they would be able to do that. Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, depending on, but I've seen them out there surveying several days. They were working out there with bo soil boring. and So apparently there's, you know, things that we don't know about there. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all comes about because uh, I just happened to come upon them two particular days there. I happen to know an individual who lives on that corner up there and he was telling me a little bit about what was going on there. So. Okay, so how about this area that we're, we're actually looking at right here? Well, the, the whole thing, you see, is it could change that entirely because you'd have less traffic if you did that, you know, on that corner because if we get, get 22 moving through, you know, you're going to get a lot less traffic, so. You're still going to have Armstrong and Bob coming up, though. Oh, yeah, there's, there's stuff coming up from Armstrong, but you, you also got to realize that there's quite a chunk of Ramsey you can't drive through down there. You know, it, it's, you only got Armstrong, and everything that goes into there from the, towards the west, you run into some blockade that you can't get through because that old road that's on the town line in there, you see, is no longer open. Because there is a, a road from Highway 10 at one time that came all the way up and hooked on to Armstrong and kept right on going. A lot of people don't even know it was there anymore. So and that, that's where the spec property comes in and they divide it right there. See, that's the town line there. And there's 160 acres in there that the Speck family has in there that has never been touched that is actually in Ramsey. And then they've got their 400 and some acres south of Highway 10 too. So you've got uh, lots of things, a lot of little pieces here, you know, to get all this hooked together to come out with a, a good answer. It's going to be a, a real puzzle. If you know where some of the ins and outs of that is, so. Well, both staff and the applicant can maybe do a little digging on, you know, plans for 22 to the west um, and or, yeah, through the state or county, whoever it might be. Well, that's just like 47 now. The word is on that. That's going to get turned over to an old county, you know, south of 22. And I haven't seen anything more on it, but that was what the, the, the 2040 plan was at one time. But you don't hear much of it at this point because of the lack of funding, you know. Mm. <clears throat> and that's a lot of crooks in there that need to be straightened out. But we're looking at 181st, so do we know, because that now, this is Sherburne County from like Walmart to that corner, right? right? I mean, and they're doing all this development to make this a wider road, smoother <clears throat> traffic. So, like, do we know what Anoka County's plan is where 181st ends to, you know, where it's that border? That's what we do. Oh, yeah, there's a... Yeah, we do? Yeah? No, where, we Where need the tar to ends. Oh. Where the new tar ends, right there. Right, so, like, we should maybe look at... <clears throat> yeah. In, in Anoka County's plan, they, they say that uh, County Road 22, they want to turn over to the state in the 2030 plan. So they want to make a state road all the way across the county. But and 22, um, oh, the, okay. that is 22 when you cross the, the county line. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, it and then it turns the where the proposed gas station is. Right. To go north, yeah. Okay. 
there's a lot of interesting pieces when you start yeah. looking at this thing and it's pretty hard to put a, a judgment call on that thing and say you're going to be right entirely because uh, there's just a lot of pieces there so until you, you kind of know what's going to happen you can't really say for sure you know until we, because I would think in the next few years we should know more even in the next year of what's going to happen with some of this stuff because uh, we're getting too many people up here for not too many roads you know we don't have many roads so we need better access and a whole lot of these roads are nothing more than what the original ox cart tracks were. That's what they are. They went around all the swamps. You look at them. Same thing over in East Bethel. It angled over from Sand Hill to Sand Hill. And that's what we did at that point. So. Well, <coughs> I think we've got, we got to go on here. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Planner Stockman. Uh, I guess I would just like to ask the Commission, what are ways that, that you think you could involve the surrounding neighborhoods, inform them, and then try to, um, I guess, appease them with buffers or trees or trails or whatever it might be? Have you, know, have you guys thought about that? I mean, because we, we could go from zero to a <clears throat> hundred pretty fast, like the mayor said, getting a room full of people, it becomes a lot of pressure on you, so you have to be, you know, prepared and, um, you know, including, including the council, too, because they can always overturn whatever you're recommending. So it sort of has to be a whole unified. Mr. Um, Chair. Yes. One, of the, one of the thoughts that comes to mind for me, quickest answer to your question would be, we're still planning a heritage festival, correct? Yes. Yeah, so, so my thought would be some sort of a poster board with uh, comment slips with that spot outlined on what is possible for an idea and see what the residents when they're there has to say. And I mean, it'd be a lot of reading, but I think it would be worth Jeff it. can man that booth. What? Liz and Jeff can man that booth. <laughs> I love that idea. I signed them up. <laughs> the city's going to probably have a booth there. <laughs> but I think that's a great way to kind of leave it open for people to Throw out questions and think it through, but also us to be able to separate the questions and get as many things covered before it comes to the, a public hearing. If you recall on the last one we had on this, it was not the residents of now then that were against it so much as the residents oh, yes, it of was. Ramsey. Well, there was a lot of Ramsey people there. The whole entire neighborhood across from Ba was here. Yep. The whole loop. But there was a lot of Ramsey people there because they were worried about Jimmy and Johnny going to the liquor store and picking up too much candy and whatever, <laughs> you know. I've got a saying for that. <laughs> that was what the big hoop was. Yes, about. everyone's going to have, but we also... <clears throat> my, my concern is regardless... If we do it or not, it's going to come in in that corner. There's yeah. no question in my mind. It's because look at the traffic that's over there going in the Elk River. It's unbelievable. The reason that the traffic is so high over in Elk River is because the school now comes down on that. Is that Cleveland? And then it jarts over to Elk River, and that's an Elk River school. So tons of traffic goes down that road and over into Elk River again. Not as much comes our way. A lot of Ramsey's in Elk River School District. Yes. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So one thing I can say is I, I'm in Burnside Trails there, so they're my neighbors. So I, I definitely will be getting a feel for <laughs> what the people in the neighborhood there want. I mean, you know, You're so a convenience store that's bikeable from my house is kind of a good idea for me. So, and, and I did not like the previous plan. I, I was against the previous plan with the 
you know, possible other commercial uses. So this this looks a lot better to me. Absolutely. Tough and I agree with you that, that it will be on that corner. That that corner will develop mm -hmm. and you know and and I'd like to have that in our city. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It'd be good to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. To be the first one and stuff, so. <clears throat> yeah. All right, so what else do we need to do? Well, uh, nothing, I guess, if you're basically, majority of you are in favor of moving forward with this, um, then the first step would be the comp plan amendment and rezoning, which would be the public hearing mm -hmm. uh, in the future. So... Is there anything you want to see changed if they brought the concept plan uh, forward again for that consideration of land use and rezoning? Um, do you like, I did sort of lay out some trails in there. I don't know if you saw that. At, Could you go that, over that? I can't really tell what it was. a little a hard to read. But yeah, it is. Sorry. In my mind, you know, we were sort of envisioning maybe a part of it being a paved trail and then some of it being even open to horses from Burnside Trail if we had a designated crossing point on Ba. I don't know if that's too risky, but, um, but it would be nice to have walking trails at the very least. And then, yeah, I can see, a, you know, a tree, a tree lined boulevard along Baw there with, you know, sort of a buffer zone and the, um, you know, commercial use does have to provide that buffer from residential to the west too, if that were to stay residential um, with that other existing house. But really, you're, you know, I'm not sure there is a, an actual buffer requirement to the east because of the road. Um, you're already, you know, more than 100 feet separated. And um, we do have Mr. Rademacher's willingness to provide trees in, along there, which is great. Um, any other comments on street layouts or? Can, can we? Uh... We've got trails in Bailey, right? Uh, there might be, yes, some trails. I'm not certain, not 100% sure on that, I guess. But they, I don't know that there's any opening there between lots, uh, Mr. Chair, to get a trail north. So it may just have to be kind of an internal system on this 100 acres. Uh, we can certainly, I believe that the power line, you know, allows trails underneath it. So that for sure could be a trail corridor. Because they keep that cleared anyway. I think it, I, in Oakdale, I believe the city of Oakdale has used their power line uh, easements for trails. I'm quite sure we're going to have problems with the console too, because I don't think the console is for this. Look at the whole console. They weren't before. I see. Okay. Maybe with this new concept plan, maybe uh -huh. it changes things. So this, unlike this new plan, does address some of the old issues. Um, whether or not it's I got, I guess I don't know if it's all of them. It really doesn't. But. I like the idea of the tree, like tree buffers, you know. Um, one question I have about the park, because yeah, the, I mean the residential piece I think is totally fine, specifically on the commercial thing, but I think the park, is that just like open for a park or is there like a designated wetland? Wetland? Oh, okay. So. We could call it open space. We may not accept it as actual park because okay. it is wet. That's what I was, yeah. 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 But nonetheless, I mean, it is nice to look at, or if you're walking adjacent to it, it would be wildlife preservation in a lot of ways. Um, I guess a thought that came to mind was, we've got 20 lots. Is there a way in that back corner where it is, you know, opposite of the power lines, north side of the power lines? Mm -hmm. Is there, a, yeah, is there a way to do some sort of little 
community park there for like that area. Just kind of, I mean, obviously other places across the street may use it, but you know, utilizing some of that dead zone that's kind of way back there. I don't know how we're gonna do a lot, but well, it if is there is something. Of, sorry, Mrs. Mrs. Go ahead, Perro. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. So. Ms. Perro, sorry to interrupt. It is kind of an awkward triangle up there, um, but I'm told that those are some of the nicest views and kind of up on that little, um, you know, piece of highland okay. for lots, but, you know, maybe even backing up along Bailey Estates. <coughs> are you thinking sort of like a playground? Yeah, or? just like something that, I mean, as the developer of themselves, I mean, something that would encourage their their new residents to have, and maybe the residents across the street may even like, I don't know, I'm just throwing out an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where it connects to the trails, and it's yeah. a little... Uh, it's just a spitball, so, I mean, mm -hmm. who knows. Which, which plan do you think we should go with? The one or two options? Oh, oh for the cul-de-sac? Yeah. Some sort of two, just because one kind of goes towards the property line of the previous, or the, the other property, which we can't connect anyways because there's houses there. So yeah, the I see no reason to go that direction, that far. The option one called the sec, yeah, it doesn't really need to abut the city limit there, or the, I mean the property boundary. So we'd be probably looking at something more like option two. Um, and, I, and I don't know if Mr. Rademacher was listening when I mentioned the flag lot scenario. Is possible for one or two lots in that upper corner if necessary? That would be a conditional use permit. So it is an awkward situation and sometimes allowed in a dead end situation. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, I, I was looking at these lots here, and they're all less than five acres, and that seems to be a little too high density for our typical development. There's, if we're um, looking for a five-acre average, not one of them is over five acres. Well, what you do, Mr. Beast, is you take the, the gross acreage, which is 100 acres, and divide by five, so that's 20 lots. Okay. So this so, large wetland counts as part of the... So we average that in, correct. Yep. <laughs> also, I agreed with uh, uh, Commissioner Perl's suggestion about having a park in here. And uh, You do like the park idea? Yeah. Oh, so, good. Okay. So that would... So there's this wetland park. Maybe uh, one of the lots nearby could have a piece of high ground that would... Not be the park the area and connect up to the rest of that area oh, is just the wilderness area. Sure. And I think that would help with the neighborhood a little bit improve the area there. to counteract mm -hmm. the commercial. And it would make this piece of land accessible. There's, there's your 300 feet. In the, it's probably usable in the winter if it's wet. like on part of it they have these sod fields. Oh yeah, the store sod fields are a little bit over the border. Yep. Um, I don't know if the you know Mr. Rademacher would entertain the op opportunity to have some sort of a work session to get council involved because we have to sort of be on the same page in order to for him to spend the money to move it all forward um, or maybe after the during or after the next planning and zoning they could attend and we could chat again or I don't know what your thoughts are but Liz I'll certainly make the time okay absolutely I think it would be a great idea for him to do a work session with the council and kind of get an idea of what they're thinking also. Is if, is if we come up with something and it gets, we recommend moving forward on that and it goes to the council and they're completely against it, what do we just gain? All you did is just waste a bunch of money on nothing. 
Right, because you're looking at $3,000 to apply for a comp plan amendment and a rezoning. So, you know, before we do that, I'm sure it makes some sense to talk about it a little deeper. Okay, well, uh, I think maybe what I'll do is put that on the council agenda for discussion at their meeting and then try to figure out a a way to pursue that okay. if they want if they are open to entertaining that as an option any other thoughts from you mr rademacher uh no liz i am very comfortable uh putting as much time into this as necessary to make it work for both us and the city it's got to work for both sides okay perfect You've always been one of our most cooperative landowners. <laughs> well, Liz, and, I, and I, I appreciate hearing that, but remember, we own it, so we're not, you know, we are in this for the long run, and uh, we've got third-generation owners now working in the company. This isn't something that we take lightly. We take great pride in, in building a nice neighborhood and a nice community, so, so we're all in. Okay, great. Well, thank you for calling in, and um, we'll keep you in the loop here. Thank you very much, and I'm, I'm very sorry, commissioners, I couldn't make it, but grandma takes priority over you. So. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. I understand he apologized for not being able to be here. I would uh, So... This is, you will take this to council then and see what the council suggests from there what we go on with it. We'll see if they have any interest in trying to. Because we've got a different council now than what we had before. So things might, yes. might have changed. Right. So we'll just have to present it and see where it goes. We'll talk about it at council level and see if they're open to a work session or something. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else? That is it on our agenda tonight. Okay, then. We need one more motion. A motion to adjourn. I'll make it. Commissioner Schiller made the motion. Commissioner Jorgensen seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.